we're going to use a video app to actually analyze the motion of a ball as it's tossed. Now, we can analyze the motion of an object when it rolls off of something, right? When it's just got an initial um, zero horizontal, or I mean a zero vertical velocity. We've never really looked at it if you throw something at an angle, right? But now we know the mathematical way to do that. We just have to look at the motion in X and Y. And so when you guys, you're going to do this, you're going to create a video and you can toss the ball from one person to another, you can shoot it, whatever you want to do, you're going to, you're going to do this. It, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. The camera doesn't know um, about distances. It just focuses on things, right? So we have to be able to have a reference point in our video and in order to get a distance. And so that's what this meter stick is for, right? From right here on this side to right here on this side, I know a distance of one meter. But the other thing is, it doesn't do me any good to have a reference point way back there if I'm up here, right? Perspective uh, changes, and so you need to have your reference point in the same frame or the same plane, I guess, as your motion, right? So if I'm going to be tossing the ball, I'm going to be tossing it with my reference point. Also, camera has to stay stationary. We're comparing the motion of the ball to the background. If you move your camera, the background moves, and then you don't have anything to compare it to. Okay, and the last thing is, is your camera should be fairly straight uh, to the plane that the motion's happening in, right? If I shoot this towards the camera, then it's not with my measurement, and don't know what's going on. So I want this to be perpendicular to the camera, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to toss this ball, okay, and I'm guessing that we didn't get a very good shot on that one, I might have tossed it too high. Um, so I'm going to come over here, I'm going to toss it again the other way. Maybe we'll get to use one of them, maybe not, okay? So from right here, toss the ball, we'll see what we get, okay? So from here, we're going to take this video and we're going to analyze it using Vernier's video physics. All right, so you guys are going to take a video using your iPads of a ball in motion and make sure you have um, a meter stick or something in there that you know a distance of that you can compare to in your video and we'll show you why that's important right now. Once you take your video you're gonna trim it so you're just using the part of the clip that's actually relevant got the motion in it you're trying to analyze and then you're gonna use video physics which is a program you should have on your iPad to actually analyze that. Now you can see I've got one in here that I've already messed around with okay I'll show you how I did that okay so when you launch video physics there's going to be some pre-made videos in there that you can deal with, okay? But you can also add your very own. And so I'm going to push the plus button up in the top right. I'm going to say, okay, I want to add my own video. So I'm going to say, choose existing from my camera roll. And that two and a half minute video that you guys watched uh, just a second ago, okay? I took four seconds out of it. I trimmed those four seconds, okay? And if we watch these real quick, what I did was I just trimmed it so that it just has the relevant motion just where the ball is moving okay I want to use that so I push the use up in the top right of the iPad screen okay and it imports this video and so now I can actually do some things with it okay now this actually is pretty straightforward okay this tool right here the one that you start with it has these crosshairs and those crosshairs are actually what we use to track the the motion of the object this tool right here is how we set the scale and this scale right this tool right here is how we set the X and Y origins okay and so I'm gonna go ahead and first thing I want to do is set the scale actually so I touch that up there and now I have to drag my crosshairs to where I want them now this is the cool thing you don't actually have to be touching the crosshairs to drag them so you can just put your finger anywhere on the screen and move it and those crosshairs move and then to actually set a point you tap the screen okay uh, and so left to right is how I want to do this from beginning to end of that meter stick that's one meter now if it hadn't been I can touch scale and I can change that but it is one meter so next done good to go okay now I'm actually going to advance this movie uh, up until the point where I just let go of it. I don't want to analyze motion when I'm throwing it I want to analyze it while it's moving so I use the slider down at the bottom Okay, to advance the movie until it just leaves my hand. Okay, so right there is where I'm going to start my analysis. Now you'll see that this is my origin down here. This is where it's starting everything. I have a problem with that. Okay, the ball's leaving my hand at a different spot. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to touch the X Y up here, and now I can move the origin around. 
Okay, I do want the origin to actually be on the floor because the ball is starting above the ground. And I want it to be um, in line with the toss. So I'm lining up that horizontal line right here with my foot. Okay, And I'm lining up the vertical line with the ball. Okay, uh, And so the origin is right here on the floor directly underneath the ball and I've got the ball split. Okay, um, And in fact, I'm I'm going to go ahead and, and leave it split because what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the center of the ball as best as I can. Uh, and I say that I'm going to trace the leading center of the ball. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. All right. So now I'm ready to actually start plotting points. So I'm going to switch up here in my toolbar to my point plotter. Okay. And now I can drag these crosshairs around and I'm going to start right here. Okay. And I'm going to start a point. And then the ball moves. It advances this movie one frame. Okay, and then the ball moves. And then I'm keeping this thing centered. Okay, and the ball's actually moving pretty good path. Okay. Um, I'm trying to keep my crosshair centered best as I can. And all right. Now you'll see that the ball is starting to get blurry. Okay, and that's because it's moving faster and faster as it starts to fall down. So this is what I said centered at the leading edge of the ball. Okay, yeah, it's got a big long tail, but I'm interested in the center of the front of it, right? Because otherwise they start to change the way this motion is working. So I try to center it on the front or the leading edge of the ball the whole way through. Now if you get a little bit off, uh, the other data points should help average it out. But the better you do here, the better your analysis will be. Okay, and there it smashes into the floor. And since the motion actually changed when it smashed into the floor, I'm not going to plot that last point. I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, now this program is done almost as much as it can. We can actually get a little bit of data from it still. Uh, up in the top right, there's these graph buttons. And if I touch that, it just takes me into a graph. Basically, this is what I just did. I just plotted y versus x. So this is its y position versus its x position. Okay, so how high it is versus where it is, and this is based off the origin. You see it started at zero because I decided to start it at zero. Uh, and then it goes up, comes back down, but the entire time it's moving forward. If I swipe right on that graph, it brings up this graph. Now this is a little bit silly. It's got both an X position graph and an X velocity graph. And this velocity graph jumps all over the place. Well, it looks like it jumps all over the place. Um, but if I look at my position, or j yeah, just my X position graph, this is a fairly straight line. Okay, And so the reason this jumps all over the place is because I was doing my best to hit the center of the ball every time, but apparently I missed a little bit. Okay, Now you can see my lowest velocity is 1.6. My highest velocity is about 2.5. Okay, so I'm going back and forth between 0.9, and so instead of using this graph to get velocity, we'll probably just find the slope of that line, right? The slope of a position time graph is velocity. Now, if I swipe to the right one more time, it goes to the y direction, and this also is sort of what I expect. Okay, I can see it started here. It went up first, and then it comes back down, and I can see on this graph that it was started with an initial positive y velocity, and then it crossed the origin right here, which is where it starts to come back down. So now it's got a negative y velocity. It's coming back down. And then it's going to smash into the ground, but I didn't include that point. Okay. So what we want to do is actually get four pieces of information, maybe five, four pieces of information. We want to know its velocity in x when it started, its velocity in y when it started, its acceleration in both of those directions, x and y, and we also need to know its initial y position. We know its initial x position because we set the origin, right? We said that it was starting at x is 0. Okay, so what we need to do is actually get this data into graphical analysis. So if I touch the little video clip up here, it takes me back to my data input screen. And now I can use this arrow to actually email this data to myself. You'd think I could just go ahead and um, open it in, in graphical analysis, but I can't. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to send this to myself, from myself, and from the email, I'll be able to open this in in graphical analysis and do some more analysis with it. Okay, so now I've emailed it to myself, I'm going to go to my mail, I'm going to check my mail, and there it is, video physics, so, and I want this CMBL file down here, okay, so I'm going to open that in graphical analysis 
and it's going to open right up here and there's some old data I had and bang it brings in a whole bunch of information okay I don't need all these graphs okay all I want is initial velocity in X initial velocity in Y acceleration in Y um, acceleration in X and initial position in both X and Y I suppose okay so I'm just gonna look at one graph so I touch the graph button up here at the top and I say show me graph one okay and then I'm gonna touch this this little bolded list and I'm gonna say just show me for now just X position data okay I look at this data and I see a fairly straight sloping line and so I know right away if it's a straight sloping line in position there is no acceleration in X right so my acceleration in X is zero which we expect because the motion in X is constant there's no forces acting in X to cause an acceleration okay I also want the initial velocity in X which is the final velocity because it doesn't change remember to get velocity from a position time graph you need the slope so I'm gonna highlight my graph touch in there I'm gonna say alright give me a linear graph analyze that click add and it gives me a slope m equals 2.138 so my initial velocity is 2.138 meters per second and that shouldn't change in X okay uh, if I'm curious if I want to know where this thing started in X I could come to my graph and I can just touch down here and it can I can pull this flag all the way to the beginning and I can say it started at negative zero zero okay so its initial vol its initial position in X or X not is essentially zero okay which is good that's how I set the origin so it should be alright then we're gonna go ahead we're gonna do this similar analysis in Y okay so I'm gonna pull out the Y now if I look at the Y position graph okay I can see that oh I've got this other line in here get rid of that don't need that anymore I can see that it's curved it's not a constant velocity graph it's an accelerated motion graph so I'm gonna skip the position graph uh, for now well actually since as long as we've got it it's showing me my initial position in Y so my why not it's actually highlighted right there is 1.443 meters okay so I'll go ahead and get that 1.443 meters and now I'm gonna go to my velocity graph to get the acceleration and the initial velocity in the Y direction okay and so let's see um, back over to the bolded list change to Y velocity turn off Y position see what we get okay um, so my Y velocity graph first my initial velocity in Y okay looks to be 3.1 meters per second okay so V naught in the Y direction 3.1 meters per second what about the acceleration well for acceleration I need uh, the slope so I'll highlight that graph it looks linear so we'll turn on our linear graph and add that in there and I see a slope of negative 10.5 okay M equals negative 10.5 so acceleration in Y equals negative 10.5 is that what I expect well that's with an experimental error right gravity's negative 9.8 that's his negative 10.5 we're pretty good with that okay perfect data doesn't exist so there it is there's there's all the information I need in order to actually get uh, the the final position of the ball now I can get it off my graph but I actually want to predict it and then check okay so let's do that so now I have my um, data from the analysis and I just want to go through a quick example on how we're going to use this to figure out everything else right so there's my data I copied it in it says I want the initial velocity and that means I want the magnitude in the direction well the video analysis actually did the hard work for me it broke it up into X and Y so all I have left to do is figure out this the resultant right and I did a horrible job of drawing that but I'm gonna go with it okay I've got an initial velocity in X 2.1 okay and an initial velocity in Y 3.1 and all I want is the resultant well okay Pythagorean theorem 2.1 squared plus 3.1 squared square root and that'll give me the magnitude that'll give me how big it is okay the other thing I want is this angle what angle did I launch it at Okay, and so to get that, I'm going to take uh, the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Since I need the angle and I don't know it, I'm going to take the arc tangent 
of 3.1 divided by 2.1 and that gets me the angle right so that's pretty straightforward we're just looking for that now the landing position is actually a little bit different right what do I need to know first well in order to get a landing position I'm looking for a delta X now let me sketch the motion right I started at this height it ended down here somewhere the ball went up and then back down I want to know this I want to know where it landed. I want to know its change in x. Okay, but in order to get a change in x, I need some more information. I need to know how long it was in the air. I need to know where it started. I need to know where it ended. Okay, so everything that drives this problem actually comes from y, the initial velocity in y, the initial um, height in y, and the acceleration in y. Because from those, I can determine where it lands. Right. So v naught in y equals uh, 3.1. Yep, 3.1 meters per second. Okay, the initial position in y, y naught equals 1.4 meters, 1.44 meters. Okay, and the final position, well, it's going to land on the ground. Y equals zero. The acceleration normally would be g, but I measured it, and so I want to use what we measured, negative 10.5. Okay, negative 10.5 meters per second per second. And so then I can just use the equation y equals one half a t squared plus v naught t plus y naught and I can get uh, the time it takes for this thing to hit the ground so y is uh, 0 equals one half negative 10.5 t squared plus v naught t uh, v naught was 3.1 times t plus 1.44 all right, this is a quadratic. I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve it, right? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's going to get me a time, t equals. It'll give me a plus time and a negative time. I don't really care about the negative time, right? Um, that would be the other time it would be zero before I launched it. Okay, so I'm going to use the positive time. What do I do with that? Well, to get the landing position, all I'm going to do is then I'm going to go into the x direction, right? And so over here I'm going to say, well, change in position x equals one half at squared plus v naught t. But this is all in the x direction, so this is zero. Oh, no, it isn't. This is zero, right? Let me undo that. Okay, the initial velocity in x is not zero. The initial uh, velocity in a and x is actually 2.1 meters per second. The acceleration in x is zero, so that goes away. So the change in position is merely given by uh, v naught t. So I'm just going to take 2.1 times whatever the time I had was. Okay, what did that initial upward velocity do? It basically gave the ball more time to to move. Okay, so from there I can get where it's going to land. Then compare this to where it actually lands in the video. So go back to your graph, get that analysis, see if it's close. You know, it should be. We're using data from the video, um, but it's just sort of an interesting thing to see physics work in real life.